called you all day, but I had so many troubles, I just couldn't get my head above the water. How did you come along with your statement? Well, Russell uh, asked the question, and I gave it, and and uh, the group that was there uh, expressed agreement with Russell, who said that his concern was that we were being excessively restrictive and and uh, we're imposing undue penalties on our pilots and, and achieving less than optimum destruction as a result. So I, I think it went went very well. The question now is what to do next. And we've uh, we've been pressured again today. The New York Times has sent a telegram down, and they claim they've been after me since Sunday, and I won't answer the phone. And they, you know, there's just a tremendous amount of pressure building up. So the question is, uh, how, if at all, do we? we put this out and I thought tomorrow I would suggest to Russell that he he ask us to declassify this because of the interest in the public press and and that the committee would then put it out I haven't talked to him about it the hearing lasted till rather late today and, and uh, he was busy afterwards and I didn't uh, discuss it with him then now the state has some or did have some concern earlier today about it. I haven't talked to Dean either, but uh, I will do so tomorrow morning before I go up to the hearing. Now, what is the New York Times wiring? Oh, there. Uh, the the, the uh, Hanson Bald was, was in today and talked to Cy this afternoon at great length. The Times uh, internally is split on the, the Salisbury articles, and, and they have some impression that we have some photographs that would support Salisbury, and they're just bound determined to get those photographs out of us. And, uh, you tell them to go screw them, so as just, far as I'm concerned. Yeah, just, just say, we don't think we owe the New York Times a goddamn this thing. Is, okay? We're not going to help you destroy this country knowingly. Yeah, this is what I've done, and, and uh, we learned a little bit about the way this thing developed in the Times. It happened on either Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, and... Uh, uh, can't think of the managing uh, Catledge, Catledge was was out of town, and Daniels was out of town, and uh, two or three others of the seniors uh, were out of town when they saw when the Salisbury articles came in. And one of the juniors uh, received them and called Daniels on the telephone and read a portion of them to him. And he authorized. He made a few changes and then authorized their publication. And Oakes, who was also out of town, got very upset at this and came in and said he was going to write an editorial denouncing the Times. Now, Oakes is no, no lover of ours. He's been torpedoing us from first to last. But he was going to write an editorial denouncing the, the Times for, for publishing such loose reporting. And Daniels, who had, who had taken the responsibility for publishing them, finally persuaded Oakes not to do this. Daniels then called Sheehan and asked Sheehan to get in touch with me. And I was in Aspen. Sheehan called me there and insisted that he, Sheehan, come out and see me. This was either Christmas Day or the day after. I hadn't seen the articles, of course, so I said to Sheehan, well, I have no damn sense in you're coming out to Aspen, and I don't have anything out here to, to uh, use as a foundation for discussing with you. I'll come back to Washington and meet you there if necessary, but, but I'd first like you to get in touch with the Public Affairs Office of the Pentagon. So I then called uh, Phil Goulding, and I also called others here and got them working on it. And and it's just developed from there to the point where the Times is internally so split that they're one group's trying to prove the other group's wrong and catch us in the middle. And this is why I've been uh, withholding all information from them. But I suspect at the moment uh, the best thing to do is to talk to Russell and just have him ask us to declassify the testimony of today. It ultimately, it would all be declassified anyhow, and it's simply a question of when it comes out. And I thought we might try to do it for Saturday papers. The Saturday papers are the, the worst read and the least read of the, the week. If we put it out too late for Friday night TV and too late for Friday afternoons, and in time for Saturday mornings, we'd get the least possible publicity on it. We're going to get a hell of a blast, Mr. President, when it comes out. And I, I did the best I could with what I had today. We, we really did trim down those casualty figures to the absolute maximum. Did Russell give you any hell about the, the uh, uh, what the communists were killing? 
Uh, oh yes. Well, I I emphasize. He made me a big speech over the over the over the, over the phone. What he was going to say to run the Fulbrights in the hole. Well, he didn't say it really quite enough. I I of course in the statement had the the figures on the the number of South Vietnamese that have been killed and U.S. forces that have been killed and civilians that have been killed. Uh, Thurman intervened and said he thought all those figures should be made public. I said they all have been made public, Senator. It's just that, that uh, neither you nor the American public has had it impressed upon their memory that this is the case. And that's why I'm repeating them now and putting this in context. Well, he wanted them specially released, so we're doing that. But but uh, R Russell did take the tack, which I think is the appropriate one for him, that, that these are excessive restrictions. And they impose undue penalties on our pilots and lead to, to possible loss of American lives in, in the effort to save North Vietnamese lives and, and uh, lives of those who are actually engaged in moving equipment to kill our men, which I think is a, a strong position for him. Now, what did they wire you from the time? Well, I am. Uh, Hanson Baldwin told Cy today that the telegram was in. Now, it, it hasn't come in as of about. 7.30 tonight, which is the last check I had on it, and I told my secretary to follow it carefully tomorrow. They, they, the Times told Baldwin to come down and talk to Cy and say that they'd been after me since Sunday morning, and, and I refused to talk to them. There's some substance to it. They called me four times on Sunday. I was in the office all day, and, and uh, they finally called at 11 o'clock Sunday night, and I had Mark answer. I told him to go to hell in the fact I just wasn't going to talk to him. Since then, I've been so busy, I haven't talked to them. But between them and Moss, uh, they're just badgering us to death. And I think the best thing to do would be to get out a, a favorable... Oh, you're just, starting, you're just starting a new hearing when that comes out. Well, I'm afraid so. I you're just starting, you're just starting a MacArthur hearing, That's almost. Right. You just, I, I agree. Uh, you just keep nudging. And I think what you've got to do is get on the record that you told the truth and you told it to the people that you're supposed to report it right, to, but right. that you're not uh, you're not in the business of turning over to Ho Chi Minh all the information no, you agree. got and everything, and I just tell them, I don't want this to go to Ho Chi Minh. I just can't do it. And when I don't know whether Ho Chi Minh reads the Times or not, but if he doesn't, he ought to. Well, uh, one of the things I did... If he needs any inspiration. I took the photographs and had our intelligence people try to find something in them that would warrant our withholding them, and frankly, couldn't find anything. I bless Wheeler Grove personally, and we just haven't been able to find it. But I'm still withholding them, and I'm going to continue withholding them. The only question I think at the moment is, should we uh, allow... You've got a damn poor bunch of generals, then, if they can't well, find I, I'd hate like hell for them to have to run for office on my ticket. Well, anyhow, yeah, I'm, I'm withholding them, that, that, but I'm withholding one of the grounds of security. But I must say that if we ever get all before a committee, you know, it will be, it'll be pretty rough to point out what it is in the photograph. Sure. I'd like to have somebody find that. I'd well, I'm going to hell. I'm going to target or something. Yeah. Well, we've got it, you know. And I, the, one of the th charges I make is that it discloses the resolution of our cameras and the tactics of our aircraft, and thereby uh, endangers our pilots. Uh, the anti-aircraft gunners can can aim more accurately if they know exactly what we're doing, what axis we come in on, and so on. But it's a, I must say, a pretty weak argument if you really get it technically qualified men. You get a McGovern or somebody like that on the other end, we're in trouble. But I haven't reached that point yet, so I don't have to worry about it. I just, I'm not going to release them. Uh, and the only question at the moment is, what more do I say? Should we have Russell uh, asked to release this? I would say no now. We'll talk okay. about it tomorrow. Okay. Well, there's no need to. If we're going to do